Hello and welcome to MB Motomes. This time it's a demonstrational video for a brand new Bailey Adamo 754T. So as always we'll start by going around the outside of the Motome before progressing onto the inside. So this one's based on the Ford Transit. Uh, it's the 2 litre. Um, to get under the bonnet on this you do actually need the key. So what you do is you put the key in, turn it left and then at the same time as turning it right lift the bonnet. Okay so with the bonnet up you, your um, bonnet retention hook is just there. Okay so with the bonnet up then just underneath here we've got washer fluid, uh, we've got the oil fill, uh, there's a dipstick with the yellow handle just there, you've got your brake fluid. If you ever need to jump start the vehicle then the positive terminal uh, or your so your red cable goes onto this here. Uh, there is a cap that just covers that uh, to keep weather from getting onto it. Oops. So yeah, that's the cap that just covers it. So yeah, you put your uh, jump uh, cable onto this one, the the red cable onto that one, and then you can earth it onto. Uh, it's a bit hard to see there, but you can earth it onto this metal tab here. So your black cable onto there, and your positive red cable onto there. And uh, we've got coolant uh, just in this vessel here. Okay, so bonnet closed. Obviously, remember to take uh, take the keys out. Uh, so we'll just work around with in a methodical manner. So first things first, if you open this door here, uh, on the door you've got on the door windows you've got blackout blinds. So what you do is you just pinch these two together here, draw this across, and if you make sure that this bar here, when you're drawing it across, goes straight. It goes onto a magnetic holder, which is just there. So you can see that's how you blank out your um, side windows. The windscreen is dealt with by pulling up this blind here. Now you can probably see there's a tab here and there's a tab just there. You do need it. It's a two-handed operation. This you can uh, pull it up, but you need to do it uh, with with two hands. There's two positions on it. You can probably see. Well, you can see that well here, but. Um, as you're going up on the runner here, you can probably just see that uh, little notch there. You can actually hook it into that notch so that your uh, blind goes halfway up and then there's one at the very top which will give you complete complete blackout for the windscreen. It will go past this, this mirror here. Uh, the mirror's got your reversing camera monitor mounted onto it. Uh, it's actually got a forward facing camera as well but you do need a... Um, it's like a dash cam but you do need a memory card in order to record footage when you're traveling when you put these back just make sure again that this bar goes back straight and then that prevents any pinching on these concertina blinds when you push it back in just make sure that it's gone in firmly because obviously if it's not and you're cornering then you could end up with a situation where the blind starts uh, creeping across with inertia obviously you're impeding your vision while you're traveling um, which you don't want for the fuel fill you do need to open the passenger's door as we as we have here you just open that flap and then your diesel fuel goes into here this model's got add blue and then you just open the second flap and that's where your add blue goes in there's an indication on the uh, dash to tell you when you're running out of AdBlue um, and then you just open this up. Most fuel stations now have got AdBlue uh, on the forecourt so you just put your AdBlue into there or you can fill it with the containers that are readily available at all fuel stations now. There is no cap for this you just put your diesel fuel uh, filler straight into there and then it's closed off by closing your flap and then when when you close the passenger door it prevents these from being able uh, to be opened you've got a chassis plate just there uh, some vehicles have tire pressures on this pillar here but this particular model doesn't um, just refer to the actual tires themselves uh, in reference to pressure the uh, they are fitted with specialist camper tires so they can actually take a, a higher pressure than you would expect from a car tire or a standard van tire it's to allow for the extra weight that the motor uh, gives the gives the chassis really it's got swivel seats so um, to go forward and back with the seats it's that bar just there and then your swivel mechanism is this bar here so if you push that forward then it'll allow you to swivel the seat 
Uh, so they're called captain's chairs, both sides have got that. Sometimes there's a bit of manoeuvring forward and back to get the seat to go all the way around. So that's your captain's chairs. Your electric point comes into the side of the vehicle just here, just before your habitation door. Uh, it comes with a cable and you just basically push push the cable into here. The end that goes into the motorhome has got a lid on it. Um, just see if I can show you a bit better. So this is the end that goes into the motorhome. You can see it's got a lid. So all you do is lift the lid up and put it straight like so. And that allows you to push the cable into the motor. So you've got your habitation door, we'll go in the motorhome in a second, but uh, obviously your habitation door, it is centrally locked, so it, it locks along with the uh, cab doors. It is worth noting that if you don't open the driver's door after you've reached your destination, it will auto lock. So this door will lock as well as the cab uh, doors. If you open and close the driver's door, it prevents that from happening. It's an auto lock system, which is um, fitted to all, all the Fords. Uh, so it's important that you either take your keys out with you. If you come out through this door and not the cab door, it will auto lock. So just be aware that maybe uh, always have your keys in your pocket or go out through the driver's door to prevent it from auto locking. This is a vent for the fridge. What it does is it draws cool air in at the bottom here and expels warm air at the top. So that's just a ventilation system for the fridge. You've got your awning light above that. Next to that, we've got the toilet cassette. So this um, door here reveals the toilet cassette. It's lockable. So with your Bailey habitation key, and you can open this. You do have to press both buttons at the same time. Okay, so with that open, when it's time to empty the toilet cassette, and there's an indication inside to tell you when that's required, you lift this little flap up here, slide the cassette out and then that's ready for uh, emptying. To empty it what you do is you slide this nozzle forward like so, turn the whole cassette upside down like that and then pour the waste away out of this nozzle. As you're doing so press this button here what it does is it lets air into the cassette as the liquid is flowing out so it prevents uh, glugging and splashing so it all just comes out in in a, you know a straight flow rather than glugging so that's the button that you press to get a uh, when you're emptying the cassette this cassette will require a chemical to break down the smells and solids that go into it to refill it with the chemical you slide that back and open this blade up with this handle here so what what i would do is empty the cassette as i've just described then fill it full of fresh water again swill it around and then empty it again and it's ready to use so what you do is you put the required amount of blue or green chemical into here the blue uh, is the standard stuff the green is uh, biodegradable so put the required amount of chemical into here and just line the bottom with a little bit of water and then make sure this is closed again before you put it back in the motorhome because this lines up with the mechanism so it's got to look like that slide your uh, cover back over and it's ready to go into the motorhome again if you're wheeling this over to the disposal point you notice it's got wheels on it and this handle extends like so so that will allow you to wheel it over to the disposal point before you put it back into the motorhome just ensure your handles clicked back into position here like so put your nozzle back so that your cassette's ready to go back in its housing you just line the wheels up in the runners and then slide your cassette back in making sure that the handle goes back into its housing like so okay working on further around the motor and then we've got the garage section at the back this is access through into the garage so with these handles, what, you, what they do is they turn like that to close the door and then they're further locked with the key. Again, using your Bailey habitation key, which looks like that, to then lock uh, the doors. And that prevents these from being able to turn. Okay. 
So in here then, there's a couple of important things that we need to talk about. So this is the garage and it's the storage area. You've got tie down points in here. You've got a mains uh, outlet and also a 12 volt outlet. So that, that's those. Comes with a set of carpets which are in here and the cushions that are required to make up the lower bed which I'll show you when we when we go inside. Uh, so they, they mount onto the, um, un, you, you utilize the table in the dinette to make the bed up but they're the cushions that are required to do so. In this little hatch here, we've got the drain down point for the boiler. Okay, so there's a couple of things that need to be drained down, the boiler being one of them, and it's quite an important one. What that means is that you're draining all the water out of the boiler, which is a 10 litre vessel of water, um, which provides you with the hot water. The way you do that is this yellow tab that you can see here, that is in the open position. Okay, so for cold weather conditions and it, when the vehicle isn't in use, it's imperative that you get all the water out of the boiler. So that is now in the open position. That's in the closed position and therefore is ready to uh, ready for the boiler to be used. If the boiler is, uh, if this valve is in that position, the boiler just won't retain any water. It, it, it you know, it'll just pour out onto the bottom, um, onto the floor out of the bottom of the motor. You can see it's like a three-way valve, so water would pass normally through this pipework here. When when this when this valve is pointing upwards, it just pours out onto the floor. So in order to use your boiler, it must look like that. So that's um, in the position that's ready to use. You've got here an adjuster on the water pressure for the water pump what can happen with the motor is that, that if the uh, temperature uh, rises and falls the pressure within the water system also does the same so you can adjust the pressure with this switch at which the pump kicks in and out so um, when we do a pre-delivery inspection we ensure really that that is uh, working but it can only work at the temperature from when it's tested. So um, you shouldn't really need to do anything with this, but it's an adjustment for the pressure at which the water pump kicks in and out. It'll become more clear when we go inside and I talk about how to operate the, the, uh, the water pump. Okay, so that's the drain down for the boiler. It's closed uh, just with a simple press on there. So I'm gonna leave that open just for now because this is our demo model and isn't in use. So. Um, that's the water being safely drained out of the boiler. Obviously when the boiler's in use, you put it in the horizontal position, not the vertical position. There's access through into the garage through this door here, but I'll show you that in more detail when we go inside. There's a light just here as well. You've got access to both sides of the garage just through another door on that side. It comes ready fitted with bike rack rails, should you wish to have one fitted. It isn't standard equipment, but that's what they are. So the bike rack mounts onto those. The reversing camera is located just here. So that's the lens for the reverse camera. And you've also got a high level brake light up there. Uh, this is, again, is just access through to the other side of the garage, as we've already shown. Okay, now we're onto the water system to fill the uh, fill the motor home. That's done via this hatch just here. And you open that like so, and it reveals like a blue plastic inlet. What you do is it comes with this hose, and the end that goes into the motor home is this one here. So this block, as you can probably see, is the same shape as this inlet here. So you push that block into there, and then the other end of the hose, which is which is this here, goes onto the tap. Um, you know, it's just like a, your, your domestic hose that you would have at home for your outdoor hose. That, uh, like a bayonet fitting, clicks onto the uh, tap that's provided by the site, or if you want to do it at home before you set off. So that's the uh, system that comes with the motor, and that's how it's filled. We've got a vent there where the boiler um, is situated, 
what that does is when the boiler is running on gas it's a it's an exhaust basically for the gas fumes to exhaust from uh, even if it's running on electric you will get heat rising from this and you'll see condensation on the side of your motor if it's running on gas you'll get steam as well uh, it's nothing to worry about perfectly normal it's just where the boiler vents under the motome here so that's that's how you're filling up your fresh water everything that goes into the motorhome um, sink or in the shower ends up in a, a tank which is your wastewater and again there's an indication inside the motorhome to tell you what levels these tanks are at so that's your fresh water and then your wastewater there's a drain for that which is this handle here so if you pull this handle it opens the tap you can probably just see that thing hanging down there that's just a cover for the where the uh, wastewater ends up coming out of so if you push that in it closes the so that you can see that a bit better if you push that handle in it closes the valve if you pull it out towards uh, the sill of the of the van then that empties the tap for the wastewater I'll just see if I can show you a little bit better here where the wastewater ends up coming out from <coughs> It's just there, so where that's hanging down, that's where the wastewater ends up pouring out. So the idea is that you would, on a site for example, you would drive, it's usually a grid that you drive over the grid, and the wastewater comes out of, the wastewater comes out of almost directly behind your rear axle. So if you line up your rear axle with the waste uh, grid, then you know you're in the right position to empty your wastewater. And as I say, there's an indication inside to tell you when that's required. Okay, so moving on around the outside of the motor, and then this is your gas locker. Again, just push these buttons in. They, they, they both need pushing in at the same time, so I'll do that and open it up. Okay, so inside your gas locker, uh, this is where your bottles go. So uh, there's just packaging in here from the seating, but one bottle goes in here, and then they're secured via these straps. The other one goes in just there. There's a pressure regulator, which is standard equipment that is here. Off the end of that, you'll need like a flexible tube. On the back of this here, there's like a threaded um, section where the flexible tube goes onto that. And then that comes off, and you, if, if your bottle was here, that's screwed into the bottle, which is housed just here. This actually has an impact sensor on it. So what it'll do is it, there's like a, you can probably see in the center there, that little thing there will pop out if if it's if you go over a really bad pothole or there's, you're you're involved in a in a crash, heaven forbid, this little thing will pop out. It, it stops the gas from um, being supplied to the inside of the motor, basically. If it does pop out, then you just use this little tool here with that on the end there, and as you can see, that corresponds with the threading on it. So you just basically you push that in. And at the same time you're pushing it in, turn it anti-clockwise and push that little thing that would have popped out back in and then it, the gas is ready to use again. <clears throat> okay, so we'll... Um, oh, just, just a couple of things I need to mention here. The Motone comes with um, a puncher repair kit. It doesn't have a spare wheel, so uh, this is the puncher repair kit. also comes with a locking wheel nut which is usually in the, um, from Bailey anyway, it's usually in this little pouch here. The colour coded, so it's worth noting which colour your locking wheel nut is, because I don't think Ford actually record it on their system. So you get a bag like this, and as you can see, this one is coded purple. So that's the locking wheel nut. This model also comes with a, a mains cable, um, so that's what actually comes with the motorhome. Okay, so we're, as you can see, we're inside the motorhome now. I'll just start from the front and then work my uh, my, my way towards the back. There's an adjustable table here um, to adjust the position of the table. There's this little lever here. You lift that up, pull it quite tight. It's on a cable. So you lift, lift that up like that, pull it up, and that will allow you to slide the table to and fro. It also spins around as well like that and then the table is used as part of the bed makeup so what you do is you put the table in the center 
and drop the table down which I'll show you how to do now okay so first of all get the table in this position here pull out the support like I've just done done there if you get the table into that position then just by the door here there's a switch if you press this button here it'll drop the table electrically Okay, so with the table in the centre, that's what forms the base for the bed and bridges the gap between the two. And then the cushions, which I showed you in the garage, are used to bridge the gap here. So you, what you end up with is this area um, as, as, you, as your bed at the front. Okay, this lounge area here, uh, both sides will incorporate the seat belt. So underneath here, uh, via this turn turning knob that's here... Uh, you can actually create a, a forward-facing seat belted seat. So I'll try and do it with one hand Initially and then if I need to pause it, I'll, uh, I'll stop. So if you're taking the cushions off here What you do is you turn this knob here lift that backrest up Okay, so you're lifting the backrest up so that the seat looks like this and Then you use one of the cushions which has got a hard back as the base for the seat and then the, the other cushion that's that's got this strap here. It's got this strap and that goes round the back of the of the backrest to keep the the, the seat in uh, backrest in position, the cushion, uh, and that's what forms the forward facing seat belted seats. So you can see there's a there's a seat belt which would go around that side of the cushion, and that's how your passengers travel with seat belts. You can just take out this section here and it slides over so that the passengers' uh, feet end up in this footwell here. Just while we're here, underneath this is where the leisure battery would go. Okay, so that's the leisure battery. That's where it's housed. It is difficult to fit a second leisure battery on these, but we have done it for some customers, but it takes up the space where, uh, where that uh, section is there. Um, just under here as well is some further things that we need to just discuss so your charger unit is here that's what uh, charges up your leisure battery on the front of that you've got some main circuit breakers so they just flip down as they would in your uh, in your house really they're like domestic circuit breakers so if there's a fault with any electrical appliance they'll flip down you can test that you've got a main supply coming in by pressing that button just there as you can see it flipped down to show that we've got mains coming in and then there's a bank of 12 volt fuses here that are all labelled up so the 12 volt circuitry is dealt with by those fuses there and they're labelled so like for example your lighting circuit your water pump will all have its own individual uh, fuse and I think that there is the regulator for your solar panel so that's where that's housed Okay, and regarding the other side, it's exactly the same operation as you can see. It's got the same uh, turn dial there to give you the forward facing uh, seat belted seats for your passengers. Okay, so working on around the motor home, then I'll probably just go around in an anti clockwise uh, way. The um, television holder is just here to slide that back. You push that little lever there, you push that lever, and then this all slides out. To get it to spin round, you just pull this lever down here and then this whole section spins around. So as you can see, this, this section then is pointing that way, so in theory you could watch it from bed. Okay. Underneath that there in this section here, we've got the fridge then. So to open the fridge, you just pull that lever like that, open your door, you've got a freezer section in there as well. To use the fridge, it's a long press on this button here. This is a three-way fridge, so it'll use gas, mains electric, and 12 volt, but from the engine alternator. Okay, so to select your power source, a long press on the square like so, and then you can scroll through using the arrows which one you want to use. So, mains electric, as you can see, as indicated by the symbol of a plug-in. Picture of a battery that is 12 volt but only from the engine 
so you've got to have your engine running for that so that's for transit cooling it's not very efficient on that you've really got to get it cold first at home before you set off and then leave it on that when you're traveling it'll maintain the temperature of the fridge and then gas so with gas it will take two or three attempts if you've only just switched your gas on for the fridge to ignite so let's just in theory now select gas and then you can select your temperature that you want the fridge to run at that being the coolest so in a really cold day there's no point putting that on full because it'll just ice up the fridge uh, so on a really cold day maybe put it on half and it does depend how full the fridge is if the fridge is really really full then you need it to just work that little bit harder and maybe put it up towards the higher end to switch the fridge off it's just a long press on here if you leave the fridge for any length of time um, laid up then really you don't want to leave you don't want to close the door and seal it because it's got a magnetic fridge uh, seal as all fridges have you need to leave the fridge slightly ajar and you do that by um, opening this up here and it reveals another little uh, notch for this to sit into so you can see it just leaves the fridge slightly ajar so that it can breathe it just stops nasty smells building up in the fridge above that we've got the control panel uh, this is the uh, control for the table which we already talked about right basically control panel to switch it on and off is this button here i'm just going to take this off so we can see a bit okay so it's, it's telling us information here about the, the water tank we know there's no water in it so Basically, if you scroll through these buttons here. So we've got an indication to tell us that there's mains coming in. And I think that's telling us that we've, uh, we've got very little water. In fact, we've got no water. So if we scroll through here, you can go into a settings menu. Shouldn't really need to do that. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to show you the main controls. You can set the tank to fill uh, and it's giving you an indication um, as to what your water levels are but if you just fill it using the method that I've shown you uh, on the outside by putting in that uh, tube into the outside that bl long blue hose with the connection on the end okay so that's your fresh water we've got no percent you can you can actually select which battery you want to use. If you wanted to use your engine battery, you can um, you can do that by um, selecting which battery. You really want to leave it on your leisure battery because if you flatten your engine battery, yeah, obviously you won't be able to start the vehicle. Waste level, so we've got no waste water in the tank at the moment. So your fresh water level is just there. Okay, so the, just go back to explain this properly. The fill tank, you can actually fill from a container on the outside of the motorhome, but it just gets confusing. Just just fill the, fill the water tank, as I showed you, from the outside. Okay, so I, I would just skip past that, in all honesty. So we're back to battery selection. Waste water, there's nothing in there. Uh, water, fresh water level, there's nothing in there. External temperature internal temperature so the leisure current we're not drawing any amps at the moment because we're plugged in so um whatever we're using via the lighting etc is being uh, negated by the fact that we're plugged in 13.3 volts that's your uh, voltage on the battery now 13.3 is uh, abnormally high but it's again it's because we're, we're plugged in if i was to unplug it it would probably go down to just over 12 volts which is a fully charged battery so you've got the vehicle that's your vehicle battery as indicated by the V and then your leisure battery um, as well that's your time so you can set your time uh, through the settings menu uh, but any motor you get from us should already be already be set up that switches your water pump on. Basically, when you first fill up with water, what you need to do is switch your water pump on via this button here. It tells you that it's on. 
and then go to your sink and switch your hot water on what that'll do it'll pump all the water from the tank from the fresh water tank through the pipework fill up your boiler and eventually it'll come out of your tap so what you need to do is wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of your tap um, and then you know basically that your, your, your boiler is full there's no point switching your heating or your hot water on until you've done this because otherwise you're just filling a you're just heating an empty uh, boiler which can damage it so what you need to do when you first come to the motorhome ensuring that all your valves are closed uh, is fill up your fresh water wait until you get a pure flow of uh, water coming out of your tap on the hot side and then do the cold side and then you know that your motor is ready to use and all the pipe work is full of water rather than air so that's your water pump uh, that is your internal lights so if i'm pressing that it switches all your lights on and off in one in one go and then that's your external um awning light for outside just turn the fridge off okay so just above the sink here is the heating controls so this deals with the heating of your water and the motorhome itself to switch this on you just do a long press on the uh, wheel here so that's on now as you can see it's illuminated if you give it okay so if you press the center of the wheel um, it takes you to this menu here the menu itself is quite straightforward really so the first one is your temperature you can see that one's flashing there that's the temperature of the motorhome so if you just press it again and then you can scroll through and select the desired temperature that you want so let's say it's 22 degrees which is probably comfortable room temperature and then press again and then that's giving us 22 degrees i'm going to just turn this yeah let's leave it on 22 degrees for now okay and then if you scroll through again the next one that starts flashing is your water temperature okay so press the button again at the moment it's off so you can select eco which is 40 degrees water hot which is 60 degrees water or boost what boost will do is take all the power from the heating of the motorhome and allocate it to the heating of the water so if you've got it on boost it, your heating stops working basically so what i would do is just leave it on hot and then mix it with your cold water so you end up with a lot of warm water again you do need to make sure that you've purged the uh, water through uh, via your tap here before switching your hot water on otherwise you, you're just heating the boiler with no water in it the next one along as you can see flashing here is what uh, fuel you want to use so so if you go into this you've got electric on two kilowatts electric on one kilowatt a mix of gas and electric on two kilowatts a mix of gas and electric on one kilowatt and gas only okay so the reason for that is if you're on a site where um, it's a low ampage site then two kilowatts will actually blow the fuse on the site so then you need to use the one kilowatt setting the next one along is a fan control you shouldn't you don't really need to uh, adjust that but it, it will let you uh, so you've got eco or high or boost so if you just leave it on eco what will happen is the the fan will blow at a, a speed which is relevant to the temperature it's trying to reach and it's indicated how fast the, the, the fan is running just here the next one along is uh, set your timer so you can set the timer to come on at a certain time and off at a certain time that sets your time actually the time on the actual uh, control panel itself and then you've got a settings menu but again for the purposes of this video uh, don't really need to go into that and then that indicates that you've got a main supply coming into the moto when it's not being you when you're not in any of the menus it just diverts back to showing you the time so i'm going to turn that off now because it's our demo model and then to turn the whole thing off again if you just give a long press 
on the wheel and it goes off okay oven uh, straightforward there's an oven and grill there uh, just one thing that's noteworthy is with the electric ring if you leave that if you've been using it you need to let that cool down before you bring the lid down because obviously that that gets red hot so uh, but if you leave that red hot and then pull this down it'll shatter the glass and damage this um, worktop lid okay so moving on then we've got the shower it's just a straightforward mix of tap for your shower um i would travel with this out of here and just in the bottom there it just prevents this from falling out falling onto the tray and cracking it uh, maybe put that on the floor with like a you know wrapped in a towel just to prevent it damaging anything these steps that we're going up to here into the bedroom and um, this here is access to the waste tank shouldn't really need to go into there but what that does is, is, is just gives you access to the waste tank should you need to sterilize it or uh, gain access so an engineer needs to needs to gain access to that next one up is just storage next one up again after that is where the fresh water tank is housed okay so again just going back to safety uh, of the tanks uh, in freezing conditions so this is your fresh water tank there's a there's a the lid there which leads to a bung in the bottom there so if you pull that out you can see the that's how you drain your fresh water tank again it's very important in freezing conditions you can imagine uh, if you leave water in there and it freezes it'll expand it can crack the tank so whenever you're not using the motome or it's especially in cold conditions then just use this system to drain all the water out of the out of the vehicle. So there's three things you need to do. You need to drain down this tank here, your waste tank, which I showed you on the outside, and also that boiler, that yellow drain that was in the garage, and um, that needs to be drained down as well. Okay, in here there's just access to storage. There, just storage compartments. Your uh, hanging space is accessed underneath the bed like so so you can see that's hanging space in there and there's a door on the front which can be opened the toilet is in here and can be blanked off like so when you're going to use the toilet you just um, lift up the lid this thing here on the side slide that across and it opens up the valve which I showed you on the cassette for the toilet uh, so then open that up use the toilet and then the flush button is just there. There's an indication to tell you when the uh, cassette is full and requires emptying, just on that LED thing there. When you're finished, obviously, just close this back up because what you've got is the toilet waste in the bottom there. And if you're driving, you don't want that slushing around. So this door will blank off uh, the washroom from the living area. And there's also a slide door that comes across here to fully uh, blank off the washroom and bedroom area okay so i think that concludes the video i'm sure there'll be questions that are thrown up from that but we're more than happy to answer those on the day that you collect the moto uh, or indeed in advance if somebody's watching this video and they want to uh, talk to us about purchasing one of these we're happy to help um, i hope that uh, clears everything up and we look forward to seeing you on the day that you collect this fantastic new moto